Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Polycap India Limited Q2 FY 2024 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kandar Tongya, Executive Director and Chief Financial Officer for Polycap India Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Waiters, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I hope all of you are staying healthy and safe. I'm Gandhar Tongya, Executive Director and CFO at Polycap India Limited. On this call, we shall discuss the Q2 FY24 results, which were approved in the board meeting held yesterday. We will be referring to the earnings presentation, financial results, and condensed financial statements, which are available on the stock exchanges, as well as on the investor relation page of our company's website. Joining me today from the management team, we have our chairman and managing director, Mr. Inzer T. J. Singhani, and our head, investor relation, Mr. Chirayu Upadhyay. Let me now hand over the call to Inzer Bai for his initial comments. Good afternoon, everyone. Leveraging the strong demand environment, the business continued with its robust growth momentum during the quarter, registering the highest ever second quarter revenue as well as the highest ever quarterly profits for the company. In addition to being a remarkable quarter for the business, the quarter was also memorable, one of the everyone at Polycap, as we unveiled our new brand, Identify. The company is on X an exciting course towards a more promising future, and I am filled with the enthusiasm for the path that lies ahead. With this, I would request Gandhav to take you through the earning presentation. Thank you, Indra Bhai. In a tentative world where economic indicators are closely scrutinized daily to anticipate the future trajectory of the economy, India stands out as a notable exception. Here, the force of domestic consumption and beneficial government initiatives have cohesively formed a concurrent narrative of long-term sustainable growth. Latest high-frequency indicators suggest that domestic growth momentum continues to remain strong with the services PMI at a 13-year high, industrial production at a 14-month high, manufacturing PMI being above 50 for 27 consecutive months, and a sharp recovery in domestic tax collection, particularly led by income and corporate tax. Payment systems indicate that business activity continues to be robust, with UPI crossing 10 billion monthly transactions, while INPS transactions reaching a volume of 473 million in September. On the consumption side, there is an improvement in domestic demand, as policy rates have been stable and inflation has been on a decline. Bank credit growth plus 20% in September, while with improvement in consumer sentiments, demand for cars, two-wheelers, as well as travel has been booming. Moreover, investment spending is increasing even faster, particularly driven by government initiatives and real estate construction. These positive indicators reflect a strong and resilient domestic economy, making it an excellent backdrop for our quarterly performance review. I would now hand over to Chirayu to take you through the financial performance for the quarter. Thank you, Gandhar. I would request everyone to refer to slide four of the earnings presentation. For the quarter ended 30th September 2023, our consolidated revenue grew by 27% year on year on the back of healthy volume growth in domestic wires and cables business. EBITDA grew by 43% year on year, while EBITDA margins at 14.4% a growth of 160 bips year-on-year. Margin expansion was achieved through enhanced operating leverage and a favorable product mix. A detailed breakup of the other income and finance costs have been provided on slide 19 of our earnings presentation. The company registered its highest quarterly pack of Rs. 4298 million, a growth of 59% year-on-year. Pat margin stood at 10.2% 
an improvement of 210 bips over that of the same quarter last year. Net care acquisition improved to Rs. 15,317 million over 10,132 million in Q1, while working capital cycle improved to 50 days as inventory levels normalized and payable days improved. On half yearly basis, our revenue grew strongly by 34% year on year. EBITDA was up by 57% year on year with margin expansion of 220 bips to 14.3%. PAT grew by 69% year on year, with PAT margin expanding 220 bips to 10.3%. I am immensely proud to share with you all that our H1 FY24 revenue, EBITDA, and PAT are the highest ever in the history of the company for a half year period. Our outstanding performance reflects the strength of our execution capability, effectively leveraging a strong market position, robust distribution network, and favorable market conditions. Moving on to slide 6. During the second quarter, the wires and cables business grew by 28% year-on-year on the back of 30% plus volume growth in the domestic business. The domestic distribution-driven segment sustained its strong growth momentum, while the institutional business witnessed remarkable acceleration, buoyed by the business being generated through our on-ground sales team. Geographically, the growth was broad-based, with highest growth coming from North region, with states of Uttar Pradesh, Delhi, and Haryana registering considerable growth. In the first half of fiscal 2024, Polycab has witnessed a remarkable growth and success across various cable product categories. Notably, Polycab's special purpose cables demonstrated robust growth in the first half. A primary driver of this growth has been the increasing demand for cables used in the defense sector, the contribution of which soared to north of 20% in the first half of the year. Polycab continues to demonstrate its commitment to innovation and growth across diverse cable product categories positioning itself as a key player in the industry. The demand environment in India's economic landscape remains robust, significantly bolstered by the government measures and improving state capital expenditure. The real estate sector is experiencing healthy offtake, providing an additional impetus to the market. The government has allocated to stand trillion of budgetary monies towards infrastructure growth in the country. To achieve this goal, various ministries and public sector enterprises are making substantial progress. The Ministry of Road Transport and Highways have already utilized 46% of its budget by August. Similarly, Indian Railways has spent about 59% of its budget by September. Large uh, uh, public sector enterprises too have made remarkable progress, reaching 42.5% of their budget by August. Key players like Indian Oil Corporation, ONGC, NTPC, HPCL, Bharat Petroleum, etc. have made significant contribution towards their respective KPIX targets. At the state level, capital expenditure has witnessed substantial growth. The combined capex of 17 major states increased by 45%, reaching approximately 1.67 trillion by August 2023. Notably, the government has played a vital role by providing 400 billion crores out of the sanctioned 850 billion uh, rupees, that is 65% of the budget estimate, in 50-year capex loans to states, aimed at boosting state-level capex expenditure. Leading private companies are also displaying strong capex plans and order books, which further contribute to the positive economic outlook. The largest domestic EPC company anticipates significant growth opportunities, with a promising pipeline of prospects amounting to 10 trillion rupees. Key growth sectors for the company include transportation, renewables, water, and hydrocarbon industry. Additionally, the renewable energy arm of a state-owned power generation entity is planning a capex of 100 billion rupees for the renewables this year. The residential real estate sector too continued with its strong growth momentum. According to a research report by a leading real estate consultant, the top eight Indian cities witnessed a remarkable 23% even on growth on the number of residential project launches done during Q3 of calendar year 2023, surpassing the 2x sales uh, growth. This trend is particularly significant as it showcases the developers' confidence in future sales. The number of launches in the quarter was 1.5 times set of the pre-COVID period in the 2019 quarterly average, highlighting the resilience of the market. Land acquisitions have also seen an uptick, with land deals increasing over 50% in 2023. Over 72% of these land deals are for residential purposes, including high-rises, project developments, and townships, indicating a positive outlook for the residential real estate sector. Supported by robust demand as well as a series of strategic initiatives undertaken by the company, our wires business to achieve good growth. 
One key initiative has been to implement a price leveling strategy to cater to diverse customer segments effectively. We have introduced the Atira, Optima, and Greenwire ranges over the past few months to cater to customers across different segments. In the first half of the year, this range is combined made substantial contributions, collectively accounting for 30 percent of the sales. The company has successfully pursued a targeted approach in the southern region, which has ta- uh, translated into impressive growth. Sales from the southern region have surged 19 percent year on year in the quarter, outpacing other regions. The success is highlighted by contributions from key states like Karnataka, Telangana, and Tamil Nadu. This development reflects Polycap's dedication to expanding its reach and influence within the retail buyer segment while maintaining a strong focus on product innovation. The international business registered a growth of 14% on a sequential basis and 18% on a half yearly basis. During the quarter, the international business contributed 9.3% of the consolidated revenue of the company. We also expanded our global footprint to 76 countries now. Please refer to slide number 8 for an update on the FMEG business. The FMEG business registered marginal growth, with segmental revenues growing by 8% year-on-year during the quarter. This growth can be attributed to the benefits of general realignment, new product development, developing in-house capacity, and various other initiatives implemented over the past few quarters, which are now beginning to materialize. All major segments, with the exception of fans and lighting, have experienced good growth, both on a yearly and quarterly basis. The Switchgears business exhibited robust performance, aided by the company's focus on specific categories, such, such as the 6KA MCBs and RCCB. Polycap's strategy of leveraging cross-selling through wireless distributors has shown positive results. For switches, our in-house manufacturing capabilities have continued to enhance product availability, resulting in an impressive sales growth of over 2x over Q2 FY23. The Atira series, a low-cost offering, has contributed significantly to the sales during as well. Similarly, the Levena series, a premium product, has made substantial contributions. Our conduit pipes and fittings business too has shown robust sales momentum, primarily due to continued healthy real estate activity. Again here, the South Zone has emerged as a notable growth leader. The Luminaries division witnessed a remarkable growth, benefiting from the setup of its separate GTM vertical. Despite muted consumer sentiment, Polycap's fan division has continued its efforts, efforts to innovate and cater to market needs. The company introduced three new fan ranges in quarter two, including two in the premium segment and one in BLDC segment, demonstrating Polycap's commitment to product diversification and energy efficiency. The launch of the Silencer Mini, a new BLDC fan in select cities, has garnered an excellent response. Pricing revisions in the LED segment, primarily due to the driver on board technology, have impacted the top line. Approximately 25% in pricing corrections have already taken place, with almost 10 to 12% being done in quarter two of this fiscal year. We believe the pricing corrections have bottomed out and expect some relief from here onwards. The segmental habit for the FMEG business continued to remain in the negative territory during the quarter, impacted by fixed costs in the absence of scale. However, with the product mix changing towards higher margin products, the declining bottom line was continued, despite higher EMP spends done during the quarter. Let's now move to slide number 10, which gives an update on our other businesses, which largely comprises of our strategic EPC business. We clocked revenues of 1,608 million in quarter two, a growth of 95% year-on-year. Profitability grew by 26% year-on-year, with segmental margin at 11%. Annual sustainable operating margin in this business is expected to be in high single digit over mid to long term. So that was the financial update for the quarter and first half of the fiscal 2024. To conclude, our performance in the initial half of the year has been truly remarkable, establishing a formidable benchmark for ourselves. This achievement reflects the unwavering dedication and tireless efforts of our entire team. Additionally, we have benefited from a favorable macroeconomic environment with market conditions working in our favor and a consistently strong demand for our products and services. Given these advantageous circumstances, we acknowledge the importance of maintaining a rigorous approach and will continue to delve even deeper in our relentless pursuit of excellence. Thank you, and we are now open for questions. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, 
you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Congrats on a very good set of numbers. Uh, my first question is uh, in terms of the volume growth that you had mentioned in cables and wires of around 30 percent. And in the press release, you had mentioned that cables have grown faster than wires. Uh, just wondered your thoughts on uh, cables. Where are we seeing such robust growth? Um, is it from the infra side, industrial side, uh, real estate side? Uh, if it is in infra, how much from central government side? How much is state government side? Uh, if you can give broad break of numbers, uh, what is driving this growth? Really great. Sure, Ravi. Thank you. So within the cable uh, uh, section, we we see demand coming from across all the segments. Uh, it's mm -hmm. infrastructure, which is directly being driven by the government, and this includes your roadways, highways, railways, metro lines. We also see demand coming from power transmission and distribution, and a good amount of demand coming from the real estate as well. So it is it is a mixed mix bag. It is from across all the industries. Uh, we at our end, since we operate through our distributors, or, or a large part of our sales are through distributors, we wouldn't have an exact proportion of what percentage is coming from which sector. But I can tell you uh, that these are the top uh, three or four sectors wherein the demand is uh, being generated from. Okay. Uh, at least rough numbers percentage, if you can give to these top sectors, it will be great. Power T&D means how much will it be out of the overall cable demand. Um, say real estate, how much will it be? Railways, how much will it be? Metro, how much will it be? Similarly, for five, six sectors, is there a number that you can put? I understand that majority of the revenue would come from dealer distributor, but you would have a sense, right, if you can do that. Really. So, Ravi, the thing is, each type of cable has different uh, or end use from across all different sectors. So, at our end, even if you supply a particular type of power cable, we will not be able to uh, gather that which end industry this is being serviced to. So, it is ultimately the distributor who is actually uh, gathering this uh, demand and is servicing those customers. And then at our end, we uh, wouldn't have a, a, a particular idea about what end uh, industry this uh, cables are being supplied to. Okay. And solar, is it a very big contributor to the overall cable growth? Uh, I mean, as a percentage of overall demand, is solar like uh, significantly a large chunk of the overall growth? Uh, so the investments in uh, renewable energy sources, both domestically as well as internationally, has been consistently increasing. And it is uh, very recently that uh, various manufacturers in the country have started manufacturing this uh, solar cables. So definitely the growth uh, is there uh, in solar cables, both domestically as well as internationally. But as of now, its contribution to the overall top line is uh, comparatively minimal. Okay. And uh, uh, the second question is, uh, what kind of volume growth will you see in the second half? I mean, your, your sense, given the fact that elections are there in another six months, uh, is this 30% kind of growth sustainable? Uh, or has there been some kind of front-ending spends that have happened by the government that you sense uh, your, your thoughts on that? So, Ravi, I wouldn't be able to give an exact number in terms of what kind of volume growth would be possible, but I can definitely say that based on the demand that we are seeing on the ground, the volume growth uh, in the industry has been better than what, what it has ever been, and we believe that this case will continue in the future as well. At RN, Polycab, we have always grown ahead of where the industry growth is at, and we believe we'll be able to achieve that in the future as well. So that is how we are uh, uh, seeing volume growth to be in the near future. But we definitely believe that it should be much better than what has the, what it has been historically in the sector. Okay. And uh, uh, the cable growth and wire growth, uh, if, YOA, if you can build that quantification, is it possible? Cable's growth again was north of 30%, while wire's growth was again uh, near about to uh, 20%. Got it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Ravi.
Uh, Enzo, uh, uh, is there someone on the line? Am I audible? Hello. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Ravi. Uh, Anjo, can you please take the next uh, uh, person on the line for the call, for the question? Hello, hello. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, you're audible. I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, there was some disturbance on the line. So I think I got disconnected. Just give me a minute. I'll just take the next question. So the next question is from the line of Manoj Gori from Equarius Securities. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, Chirayu, here I would like to understand on the realization part, because obviously when you said like volume growth was around 30%, so probably we are talking about increase in, uh, probably drop in uh, realizations. But if I look at the copper prices as compared to 2Q, those were on the higher side. So was there some impact because of the higher contribution coming from something like Etira or probably can you throw some light over here? Sure, Manoj. So when you're looking at volume growth, you need to look at three things. One is how the copper price uh, uh, movement has been, how the aluminum uh, price movement has been, and how the USD INR price movement has been. You need to take all three of this into account. Uh, and again, what also you need to take into account specifically for our case is that uh, when we... Uh, 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 work with our vendors. We have those embedded derivatives within the context wherein we uh, work on an M minus one basis. So it's a mix of two things. Whenever we have uh, institutional contracts, they are back to back price, whereas with our, uh, those that we prepare for distributors, they are on M minus one basis. So there's a mix of both the things. If you look in terms of the pricing, uh, if, uh, for uh, the month, uh, monthly average or the quarterly average for copper, copper has definitely increased by about 8%. But at the same time, aluminium was down by 8%, and USDINR rates were up by about 3 or percent. That was for the uh, quarter. If you look at M-1 basis, copper prices were up by 3%, while aluminium prices were down by 13%, and USDINR rates were up by 4%. So if you take a mix of both these things, and, uh, uh, then you'll get to know that uh, the value contribution, because of uh, whatever price variations that I mentioned, was in those single digits, and, uh, and hence the growth that we have achieved is actually because of the volume growth that we did. Right, right. Uh, second, if you look at the advertisement expenses, obviously there has been a sharp increase and that has leading, uh, led to strong volume growth. So probably if you look at you have been going very aggressive, you have sponsored into World Cup as well. So uh, does H1 accounts for those expenses or probably that would be purely coming into third quarter and whether we would be booking it in the entire quarter or we will be amortizing it gradually? So Manoj, these are uh, period costs. So as and when the event has occurred, these has been accounted for in the uh, relevant period. So till 30th of September, whatever event has occurred, whatever advertisement has been done, uh, whatever shots have been aired, those have been accounted for. And as the World Cup is continuing, the balance cost as and when it is incurred, it will be accounted for in the third quarter. Sure. Thanks. Uh, lastly, on the FMEG side, so uh, we do understand that somewhat demand has been under pressure and probably there has been delay in revival because we were expecting somewhere around from FI24, probably FMEG on top line and on profitability should improve. So any comment over there, like how do we see uh, in the second half and probably from FI25, if you can throw some light. And lastly, on the project leap, if you can throw some light with regards to any revisions in your guidance or something like that. Right. So if you look at the SMEG uh, basket, there are different product categories, and uh, uh, some of them are seasonal, some of them have demand across the year. So if you look at 
the uh, fans business it is more a seasonal business and uh, 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 very recently there has been a change of uh, energy norms so uh, this is the first year post those energy norms and hence uh, the coming season will be the first year post those uh, changes and we believe that uh, we should have good pick up uh, as and when that season uh, begins from october november of this year if you look at the lighting segment uh, uh, there has been a uh, kind of a pricing correction that have happened over the past 12 to 15 months and which has actually affected top line uh, for all the players in the industry uh it lighting does have a kind of uh, a pick up in sales during around the uh, uh, festival season so we believe that whenever such uh, uh, festivals would be there there might be some other pick up that we, would be visible at our end we will we will be ready for that we will we will have our distribution in place we will have our products in place we will have our new launches in place so that we will be able to cater to the demand that will be coming during whatever uh, seasonal uh, demand is there if you look at switches switch gears and other product categories these are comparatively smaller for us uh, we are employing various uh, initiatives uh, so that the growth of this uh, product categories uh, is higher and the mix improves more towards them as we uh, guided or we've given out in the one presentation we've already realized we are already realizing good growth uh, we realized good growth in this quarter for both switches and switch gears as well as conduit pipes and fitting and uh, uh, or most of or a, la- a large part of the demand for this product is linked to real estate and since real estate is doing well uh, uh, that consumer demand continues to be there at our end as well we have done a lot of work on the project team so the entire distribution realignment is something that we've completed over the past 12 months we've uh, 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 launched various new squs in all those product categories as well we are employing the price adding strategy and hence are now have offerings across those uh, product categories wherever we don't have we will be coming up with new product categories within those price points we are also working a lot on influencer management uh, as well and as uh, you are aware our brand positioning is something that now we have very actively started working on so we believe that based on all these initiatives that we have taken and will be taking the fmeg will start showing a uh, growth both top line as well as bottom line it will be a gradual growth but it will be uh, a growth that we have uh, guided uh, the market towards in terms of the uh, leap targets uh, we are in the process of recalibrating those targets we definitely believe that the fy26 target of uh, reaching 20000 crores of top line is something that can or uh, that can be achieved ahead of time right we are recalibrating that along with all the other targets that we had given out along with the top line target and we should be out with those uh, recalibrated numbers in the, in the space of a few quarters from now thanks thanks and uh, wish you all the best thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of atul tiwari from city please go ahead hi Yeah hello sir uh, first of all congratulations on yet again uh, very strong performance uh, my question is again on fmeg so just trying to kind of probe a little bit uh, so the distribution realignment that we have done uh, that has been complete right i mean there is no further realignment happening on a major scale i know i mean you can keep on teaching the business so just to, just wanted to confirm that right at all so the uh, distribution re- realignment is largely complete having said that but we'll continue to improve our distribution across all the geographies so that is something that will continue but yeah on the last part that entire realignment or working with or tying up with larger dis- distributors that we wanted to do that is uh, something which is completed okay and my second question is on the ehv facility uh, that uh, you were setting up so what is the update on that i mean when is it likely to be completed and how much is the capex and once completed you know how much top line could it do or what is the capacity if you could you know share some details on that so we have started uh, uh, incurring capex on that project uh, uh, this year and the next year last part of the capex that we will be doing at the company level will be uh, or, or for the capex in wire segment will be going towards that project as we were guiding the past we expect that the uh, the facility will be becoming operational by the end of fy26 and uh, as of now we are uh, uh, in line with that uh, uh, timeline that we had given out in terms of the uh, revenue potential and everything we'll be coming out with those specific numbers as and when we are closer to that time period it's still two uh, years away uh, since uh, that uh, uh, our facility is expected to become operational and we'll be coming out with specific targeted uh, numbers for those facilities uh, once we are near to that uh, time 
Okay, and, and if you could allow me one more. So, uh, uh, I mean, obviously we understand that a lot of benefit has happened to the business because of fronting of CapEx by government this year. Uh, so, once a quarter got over, I'm not asking for your number, but have you seen any kind of uh, let-up in the CapEx uh, because of the election season, etc.? I mean, uh, definitely the on-ground demand has been good. There are, There has been various tenders that have been rolled out for various projects across industries and definitely that has resulted into uh, 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 a better uh, demand for cables. But this is not something which is this particular year's phenomenon. If you've noticed, the government has been increasing the amount of CAPEX that they've been doing for infrastructure every year over the past three years. And this is something that uh, we believe should continue uh, going ahead as well. Uh, of course, the caveat being that the current government uh, uh, comes back to power. But at RN, we do believe that uh, this is something which is a structural story, structural uh, uh, demand driver for the country. Uh, uh, very recently, I believe yesterday itself, we, uh, there was a news article that the uh, Ministry of uh, Highways have come out with a 2047 uh, pipeline wherein they want, uh, they they will be spending or they are thinking of spending something somewhere close to 20 trillion rupees in terms of capex. I mean, this is the kind of uh, 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 growth uh, story or uh, the uh, uh, path which is there ahead in terms of infrastructure growth in the country, and we believe this is a long-term story. It, uh, there is nothing to do with a pre-election year or something uh, of that sort. Okay, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the next question is from the line of Shubham Agrawal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just two questions. The first one on, is on exports. This quarter, the exports trend seems to be weakened a bit. Uh, we are at about 390 crores this quarter. Uh, can, you, can you give us a sense what kind of exports is expected over the, you know, going forward and uh, the decline? We've seen a decline this year and we saw a similar decline in Q3 of uh, last year as well. So is this a one-off or do you see that the exports will pick up going forward? That is the first one. So Shubham, we did around 400 crores of exports business in this quarter, and uh, here in uh, it was actually an 11% uh, growth to what business we did in Q1. If you look at the H1 numbers as well, it is uh, actually an 18% year-on-year uh, -year growth. So we do, do believe that there are the international business holds immense value for the company, and we are at our end are geared up to uh, capture that opportunity. We have uh, those capacities available. We have those approvals available in various geographies, and we are incrementally looking to add new geographies as well. So, in the mid to long term, we uh, we believe that uh, international business can be a, a big uh, revenue generator or a contributor to the uh, business top line. What and bottom line? Yeah. So, any sense like uh, this next year? Let's say will that this ten percent uh, contribution go up to let's say fifteen percent, or uh, do you think it's a stretch? Just a broad sense. I mean, we are recalibrating those numbers, as I mentioned in, uh, to the previous participant. Uh, all those guidelines or all those targets that we had given as a part of our project reach numbers uh, and the 10% of contribution from uh, exports being one of those uh, uh, goals uh, is a part of our recalibration process. And uh, we'll be out with those revised calibrated numbers in a matter of few hours. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Just coming down to the second question. Uh, uh, sorry if this has been asked earlier. Uh, I missed, I got dropped off the call. Uh, so I just wanted to ask that H1 growth has been very strong for the company and for Vicar, Vicar, uh, wires and cables as a whole. And that is also a lot to do with the front ending of the government capex. Uh, you know, we might continue to see this growth uh, in Q3 as well. But uh, what is the sense? Do you see as, as soon as we approach elections, will this growth probably slow down a bit? Entering to 4 FI 24 and Q1 FI 25. Uh, could you give a sense? Uh, and just related to that, uh, since the base will be very high for nine months FI 24, uh, and you know the government, the next budget would spend the one-year budget in one year. There'll be no front ending. Do you see that the growth could be relatively uh, lower than let's say what we are doing right now uh, in FI 25? Those are the two questions. Those are the two related questions that you can answer. Sure. So at our end, what uh, we have already always been able to achieve is that H2 has always been better than H1. And we believe this year will be no different. The performance in H2 should be better than what we have been able to achieve in H1. 
In terms of front ending of uh, 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 capex by the government, again over here we believe this is something which is uh, 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 a long term structural story and not a one year story because of being a pre election year. Uh, if you look at the cables uh, uh, as a business, whenever new orders are given out, it is not immediately that the requirement of cables come in. So in that sense, there are the, all those orders which are being given out for development of new projects right now. The demand for cables is something which will be coming in uh, coming in uh, over the period of next one year. So uh, specific to those particular months wherein the election will be happening, we, uh, there's, there's not going to be that kind of demand slowdown that might happen. Second thing is, even if we uh, uh, look at the other uh, uh, avenue, which is the private capex, that is also something which is uh, picking up. Uh, because of all the government capex that has happened over the past three years, we are seeing that kind of uh, crowding in of private investment coming in from the private players. And that is also something which will support uh, or uh, add to the demand of cables going ahead. So uh, having said that, even if, uh, and I mean, uh, like I mentioned, uh, even if the 9N numbers for this year are high, we don't believe that uh, next year should be difficult. Uh, it's a structural story. The demand for cables is rising uh, structurally. And we believe that every year we should be able to uh, uh, give pretty good growth uh, or be able to get pretty good growth in the Yeah, got it, got it. Uh, thanks, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for the answers. Thank you so much. Uh... The next question is from the line of Aniruddha Joshi from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, so thanks uh, for the opportunity. Uh, so two questions. Uh, while uh, we are doing great work, uh, obviously we are uh, getting help by the up move in the infra, real estate, capex, all those cycles. So just from your uh, experience, uh, in 2007-8 we experienced similar situation. Uh, but post that, there was a sudden uh, decline in uh, overall capex, real estate activity, etc. So, uh, from your experience, what was the uh, polycare strategy that time versus the strategy right now? Or do you see it's different this time? And probably the capex cycle is going to last uh, for a considerable more period of time, and so that uh, there is a more benefit uh, possible to us, uh, for us. That is question number one. And question number two is uh, uh, the spends related to Polycab relaunch. So whether all the spends are already in Q2 uh, H1 numbers, or do you see some more uh, expenses getting incurred in uh, H2 as well? Yeah, uh, that's it from my side. Sure, thanks. Sir. So in terms of the uh, KPEX from the government, uh, we believe that this time is different. We believe that this is, and as I've mentioned uh, uh, to uh, many uh, people, that the, we believe that this is a structural story which will play out consistently over the next few de uh, decades. Uh, uh, the current government, the prime minister, they've been very uh, vocal in terms of what they want to achieve over the uh, next couple of decades. They want India to be to become an advanced nation by 2047, and, and they believe that infrastructure growth will have to be a, a big or primary driver of this growth. And so we believe that going ahead as well, the kind of capex that the government has been incurring over the past three years and the kind of improvement that they have been doing in terms of the numbers, that kind of uh, uh, will continue to go on. In terms of the real estate cycle, uh, generally the real estate cycle in the country is about six to eight years long. We are in the second or third year of the current real estate cycle, and so we believe at least the next three to four years uh, 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 should be good from the real estate point of view as well. So, uh, uh, so I guess uh, that is uh, on the uh, uh, KPEX side. On the uh, cost for the relaunch, uh, as Gandhav mentioned, uh, whatever costs have been incurred during the quarter, they have been accounted for the uh, during the quarter itself. And as and when those costs will be incurred going ahead as well, they will be accounted or uh, taken into financials in those quarter itself. Uh, we we have already incurred the cost, uh, a part of it on the relaunch, but we'll continue to increase our. Uh, uh, expenses on advertising and promotion, as we've guided that incrementally, 3 to 5 percent of our B2C top line will be uh, spent for uh, brand positioning. So we'll continue to incur those kind of costs, and that is something that will happen pan year, not in a one or two months, or one or two quarters, but it is something that will happen across the year and all the years going ahead. And they will be uh, taken into financial as and when those are incurred. Okay, sure, that's helpful. Uh, last one question. We uh, have uh, a uh, uh, Mr. Joshi. Uh, Mr. Joshi? Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Um, I mean, if you have more questions, you can please rejoin the queue. Sure, thanks. Thank you so much. 
Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one per participant. Thank you very much. And the next question is from Adesh Mehta from Motilal Oswal AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, so my questions have been answered. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Rahul Maheshwari from Ambit Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. Hope I'm audible. Yeah, you're audible. Rahul. Yes, yeah. you are audible. Sir, so, uh, just one thing. Can you explain in your corporate presentation where you have given that the margin protection will be through embedded derivatives? Uh, in short, uh, it would be protected against commodity price volatility through access to embedded derivatives from suppliers. So in long run, what kind of uh, support and uh, protection you are, uh, you can throw some color on it, it could be really helpful. Sure. So uh, when we work with our vendor, whom we procure our raw material from, we have embedded derivatives within the contracts. What this contract allows us to do is that it gives us a particular time period to firm up the price of those raw materials. What I mean by that is that when we place an order with the vendor, the price that is prevalent is a provisional price, but we would have a time period of around three months to finalize the price of, of those raw materials. So what will happen is that from the time that we place the order, we receive the material, we convert it into whatever cables and wires that we wanted to manufacture, and till the time that we uh, sold to whatever end customer that we wanted to sell to, whatever changes in the prices of raw material would have happened, that will be completely passed on to the end customer. And uh, over here, uh, since we have those time period to decide or form of the price at a future date. And that is why it will act because of the embedded derivatives. The commodity prices for us will be a complete pass-through. So irrespective of whether the prices went up or down with the time that we placed an order to the time that we sold the cable survives, whatever changes would have been there, uh, uh, that volatility would be negative because of the embedded derivatives. And that is why we, uh, uh, and that is how it has uh, played out over the past many years. So if you look at our uh, margin uh, uh, trajectory, it has been compared to the very stable, irrespective of where the, what the copper price or aluminium price movement has been. And just follow up question on that. Uh, in terms of percentage or range, how much is the backward integration in the wires and cables for you currently? Almost 100% on the cables and wires. Okay. And and, and uh, just one uh, connected question, as you have entered more into the renewable cables, data center cables, the difference between the uh, realization or the margins, can you give some color that how big is the difference between the normal cables, which is wires, which is being used in real estate or normal cables compared to the emerging sectors, which you are uh, seeing? So uh, the differential in terms of margins will vary depending on what cables we are looking at. But all such cables which have traditionally been imported and it is now uh, that uh, the demand for them has been increasing uh, domestically and hence have been started uh, uh, many, getting manufactured over here, what internally we call a special purpose cables. For them, margins are definitely better than uh, uh, what we make on the other types of cables. But again, it will vary depending on which cable we are looking at. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. All the best wishes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, uh, before we take the next question, ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one per participant. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question is from Rahul Agrawal from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Good afternoon and congrats uh, on another quarter of super performance. Uh, sir, two questions. Uh, please allow me to ask them very short. Uh, firstly, on channel finance, uh, you know, my understanding is the balance sheet has improved quite a bit on working capital purely because our channel finance percentages have increased into FMEG as well as cable and wire. Uh, the question essentially is if, if the channel pays you faster against cash discount, does that mean lower gross margins just from an accounting perspective? That's, that's question number one. Sure. Out. So, no, that doesn't uh, translate into lower margins because whenever we revise the prices of uh, uh, the cables or wires, we definitely take into account that this is the kind of cash discounts and what kind of uh, general financing we, we have with our uh, distributors. So we take that into account while devising our prices, and hence that doesn't translate to lower uh, gross margins for us. 
Okay. And second question was on overall uh, margin sir, guidance. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, sir. Uh, sir, due to time constraints, we'll only take one question per. Uh, operator, I have a suggestion. Why don't we close the second question of Rahul and then we'll probably for the next participant on, sure, on the no problem, sir. I'll do that. Rahul, please go ahead. Thank you so much, Gandhar. So, you know, the question essentially on margins. I think cables have done better than wires again, but the margin trends are reversed. That they're holding up QOQ also. Margins are 14.4 percent. Your guidance, you know, earlier has been 11 to 13 sustainable range. I think on TV today you said 12 to 14 sustainable range. I understand it's more conservatism, but uh, my sense is ultimately we're expecting this to normalize, right? So, you know, eventually it should trend down towards 12 percent. I don't know when it happens. But that should be the reality, you know, for the industry. Is that the right way to understand? I mean, Rahul, we believe that 11 to 13 percent range is something that we'll be able to achieve, irrespective of what happens in terms of commodity price movement and all. And hence, that is that has been what our guidance has been. Uh, uh, what we have been able to achieve over the past few quarters has been because of various reasons. It might be because of the mix that we have been able to achieve. Uh, within the cables, it might it is because of the uh, higher number or higher percentage of contribution from exports as well, which is a better margin product. It is also a large to a large part now because of the scale at which we are operating. So because of various reasons, uh, we have been able to uh, uh, register better margins than our guidance. But in the long term or in, uh, in the mid term, if you are putting it into your model, you should definitely put or uh, take into uh, account the guidance that we have provided, and then uh, you'll never have a negative surprise on it. So, you know, in terms of growth and mix, I think everything is sustainable, right? The mix is going to sustain ahead. The exports are going to be better. Uh, so I think there is no reason for margins to come down if, if that doesn't change. If we are able to sustain the current levels or, or the current scale that we are operating, if we are able to sustain the contribution from international business of HDC, LDC, different types of mix, uh, definitely we should be able to sustain the margin. But, I mean, uh, at... Uh, at, sitting at this point in time, we wouldn't be able to uh, 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 comment that 100 per, by, for like 100 percent sure we, uh, that is something that will play out. But 11 to 13 percent uh, uh, is something that we are definitely believe that, uh, irrespective of what happens, that is something that we'll be able to achieve. And hence, that has been our guide. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gandhi, for taking the question. All the best. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just a reminder again, please limit your questions to one question per participant. The next question is from the line of Praveen Sahai from Prabhudas Liladar. Please go ahead. Thank you for taking my question and uh, uh, many congratulations for a very good set of numbers. Few data points I need. Uh, so can you give the capacity utilization in the wire and cable currently as well as uh, uh, the contribution of a cable and the wire uh, segments in the quarter and the KIPS number for 24-25? Sure. Uh, so in terms of capacity utilization, we would be operating somewhere in the vicinity of 65 to 70% on cables and wires. Uh, yeah, the, in terms of CAPEX, as you guided this year and the next year, uh, we would be incurring CAPEX of close to uh, six to 700 crores of rupees, and that uh, guidance continues, uh, stays as of now. Can you bifurcate 24-25 equally? Both here. Both here. Uh, uh, so uh, six to 700 crores of CAPEX each year. But each year. Okay. And uh, in terms of mix between cables and wires, again, since cables have performed better than wires, it would have a few hundred basis points more towards the uh, cable side. Okay, great. Thank you. I'll come back Thank in you the so much. The next question is from the line of Abhijit Akela from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, and thanks so much for taking my question. I have just one on the CapEx uh, position right now. So 65-70% utilization we are at right now in wires and cables. Uh, usually what is the uh, you know optimal or peak level we can go up to? Uh, and uh, at what point would we need to start thinking about adding capacity beyond this uh, EHV project that we are doing? Is there currently something besides EHV that's also going on in terms of capacity de-bottlenecking, or uh, you know, is that something we need to... Uh, consider as we get closer to optimal levels. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Abhijit, we can go as high as 95% in terms of capacity utilization. 
But what we have always done is that we have invested ahead of time in terms of capex, and we incur those capex every year. So as you know, even uh, 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 prior to the six to seven hundred crores of guidance that we do, we anyways used to incur about three to four hundred crores of capex every year, and hence we continue to in, uh, 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 invest into uh, expanding facilities uh, every year. So that is something that we'll uh, continue to do. In terms of other projects that we are uh, doing uh, other than EHV, we are also. Uh, 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 investing in expansion of our uh, facilities for SPV, uh, SPC, which is our special purpose cases, and uh, uh, various other uh, product categories. But yeah, I mean, uh, we'll continue to incur those capex in terms of expanding those facilities every year, and we wouldn't wait to reach 80, 90, 95% of capacity variation to incur more capex. Got it. Thank you, Chirayu. Just to clarify this, uh, 300 to 400 crores that we keep spending on a usual basis, approximately how much capacity addition would it lead to on an annual basis? Is it like 10%, 15% or higher than that? I mean, it would vary uh, year on year. Uh, roughly about uh, three-fourths of that goes into cables and wires and one-fourth goes into FMEG. So on FMEG, we have been uh, 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 moving towards in-house manufacturing, so that is where in, uh, the incremental capex has been used towards, and cables and wires that has been used for various purposes to in, uh, increase the uh, capacity of domestic cables, increase the capacity of manufacturing cables which are exported, and all on and so forth. So the, 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 the uh, expansion numbers will vary quarter on quarter, uh, sorry, year on year, uh, uh, depending on what we've uh, spent it towards. So thanks a lot. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Natasha Jain from Nilmar Bang. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Congratulations, uh, sir, for a strong set of numbers. I just have one question on the ANP spend. So, uh, do you bifurcate the ANP spend into cables, wires, as well as FMEG? If yes, then can you please give us the split, both for this quarter and same quarter last year? I mean, uh, Natasha, we haven't, uh, uh, we uh, normally doesn't, don't give out the split between the cables and wires and SMEG, but definitely there is a kind of, uh, uh, the bifurcation that happens in financial as in when whatever that has been incurred for. So just any sense, uh, Chirayu, as to more spend is towards wires and cables or towards SMEG? A qualitative sense will do. I mean, it will depend on uh, what kind of spends we've done. So, uh, for example, if there is a particular advertisement that we have come, uh, come out for wires, for example, the green wires advertisement that we came out for last year, so then those costs will be incurred on the cables and wires segment. If there is something that we're doing on the fan side, that will be incurred on the FMG side. So depending on where it is utilized, uh, those costs will be uh, uh, accounted for in the financial. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nilesh from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, hope I'm audible. My question is on lighting division. You explained briefly that the lighting division is undergoing difficult phase on change in pricing environment. So could you please elaborate on exact situation happening in the lighting division, uh, both at company level and industry level, if you could so? Thank you. Sure, Nilesh. So uh, uh, within lighting, uh, especially in the LED segment, what has come about is that a new technology, which is known as driver on board technology, has come about. Uh, because, uh, and because of which, there is efficiency in terms of uh, uh, costing, as well as uh, which is uh, which has led to pricing correction in this. So what has happened over the past 12 to 14 or 12 to 15 months is that uh, the pricing of LED uh, uh, lighting they have gone down by almost about 24, 25 percent. And that is why uh, you you see the top line getting uh, 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 softer for for us for other peers in the segment as well. So that is uh, what uh, that is what is an industry phenomenon as of now. As of now, we believe that that pricing correction is uh, should be done with, and now going forward that should be. But uh, let's see how it pans out uh, going ahead. Yeah, thanks for the information. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Sandeep Agrawal from Naredi Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Question is regarding uh, uh, the why and cable side. Have you seen any material capex coming in near future in India? Uh, uh, why and cable side? Sorry, Sandeep. Are you asking for us for uh, in terms of capex? Yeah, no, 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 for the industry. 
I mean, if you look at across all the industries, so cables and wires have requirement across industries. You look at roadways, highways, power transmission distribution, real estate, each and everything. Uh, if if a, if a private player is constructing a new uh, manufacturing facility for himself, or uh, uh, schools are being constructed, uh, uh, houses, commercial, uh, real estates are being constructed, everywhere cables and wires are required. So in, in that sense, and that is the reason why uh, you've seen the kind of volume growth that has been uh, being driven by the industry over the past uh, few years because the capex as well as in, uh, investments in infrastructure growth has been continuously increasing for many years now. And that is something that we believe will continue to go on for um, uh, many years going ahead as well. Thank you so much. Uh, sir, if you, have, if you have more questions, can you please rejoin the queue? Thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Onkar Gugar Dare from Sri Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, my question was regarding SMEG. You have been highlighting that it would be a 10% margin business. Uh, but given the state of the business currently and given the sentiments, uh, I mean, what kind of or target you would be looking at for that. You have stated your target of 10% and when it can turn into the into black and uh, excluding ANP spend, what would have been the profit this quarter or loss this quarter? Sure, Omka. So uh, when we started uh, Project Key, there were various different changes that we did in how we used to operate in the FMEG segment. One of them was the complete realignment of our distribution channel. That is something that took us almost one and a half, two years to complete, and which is now behind us. There are two to three other things that we are doing on the FMEG side, which should help us on improving our numbers on that side. For example, we are uh, doing a lot of work on brand position. We are doing a lot of work on new product development. We are making sure that we have product offerings across price uh, segments so that we are able to capture the opportunities that uh, comes uh, uh, in the entire industry. We are working a lot on influencer management. Uh, if you look at the SMEG as a business, the influencers are the one who actually decides or pushes a particular customer to decide a particular brand when they are buying a product. So we are doing a lot of work on influencer management as well. Through all of this, we definitely believe that uh, the growth in FMEG business should start picking up. In terms of bottom line, there are two or three things which uh, uh, should help us. One is that we are now uh, trying to change the mix of our product categories within the basket. Till now, pants and lights uh, uh, have been the largest contributor of uh, top line on the FMEG side. But what now we are trying to do is change the mix more towards switches and switch gears. Switches and switch gears as an industry has lower competitive intensity and hence much better margins than what can be made on a fence and right side. As in when that mix change will happen, you'll start seeing uh, implementing margin. Uh, second thing that uh, should help us is scale. We manufacture everything in-house, even on the SMEG side. And when you are operating at lower capacity, definitely your costs are higher and hence that uh, affects your bottom line. As in when we are able to scale up uh, the the FMEG uh, uh, segment, the product categories, uh, you should start the improvement in margins over there as well. So, uh, 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 and the third thing that we are trying to do is premiumization. So, in all the product categories, we are trying to be present on the premium side, wherein again the margins have been are better. Traditionally, we have been only present in one price point, but now we have offer, uh, offerings on the premium side in all those product categories. So again, as in when the mix changes more towards uh, sales of our premium products, again, the margins will start improving. So we believe that going ahead, both top line and bottom line should start uh, to see improvement. Uh, and it will be a gradual improvement, but we still definitely believe that 10% uh, of EBITDA margins in FMG is something that we should be able to achieve by FI26. Yeah, and the clarification on normalized profit excluding A and P spend, what would have been? So if you exclude the AMP spend, definitely there has been an improvement in profitability. I mean, it wouldn't be a significant number, but definitely it has been better than what it was in the past quarter. But has there been a profit or a loss? Or you have broken even or you haven't still? Uh, again, we'll, uh, if, we, if you look at the combination, we, we might have been in a bit of uh, 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 profit. Okay, and uh, in the short term, you expect that trend to continue, to be in uh, black? 
definitely gradually we will start seeing uh, much more improvement happening on the bottom side, bottom line side as well okay thank you so much ladies and gentlemen due to the time constraints that we are, that was the last question i now hand the call over to mr gandhar tagko tongya for closing comments over to you sir thank you so much for joining us uh, today in case if you have any follow up questions please do write to us at investor.relations@polygap.com and we would be extremely pleased to attend your queries thank you and have a great day bye bye thank you on behalf of polycap india limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines